Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Day. We've got a special treat today. we got William Burgess from Power Technology and Christine Russell from Coon and Nagel. Coon and Nagel, yeah. Coon and Nagel. I was so close on my pronunciation <laughs> on that. I won't get it wrong again because now I'm embarrassed and I've done it on camera, so it's great. Thank you all both for being here. Thank you, Robert. We're going to talk exports today in a variety of different ways. I kind of want to begin with what you both do in your day jobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, William, tell me, first of all, what do you do at Power Technology? Well, I'm the VP of Operations, and uh, we make lasers at Power Technology. It's always been a product that's had lots of international draw. Uh, so we've been exporting now for probably four decades. And that just really made it easy for us to transition um, as the global economy has grown and technology has grown. Uh, really helped us grow our business. Yeah. And because of that, uh, I got involved with the Export Council, and uh, now I'm the chairman of the Arkansas District He's Export been Council. been roped into a big volunteer position. That will come back to the Export Council. Uh, Christine, tell me a little bit about Coon and Noggle and what you do for them and what they do. So, Coon and Noggle is actually one of the world is the world's largest global freight forwarding company. Um, what I do for them is I handle Arkansas as an account executive, and I work with all the companies within the state of Arkansas on moving their merchandise all over the world, whether it's importing, exporting, air, ocean, you name it, we move it. Um, but what I do with that too is I also sit on the District Export Council I have for the past six years. Um, before Kununagel, I have a background also not just logistics but business development overseas and I spent time in many countries overseas able to develop those countries and I do the export use for um, the District Export Council and teaching and uh, work with the governor's awards and that type of stuff. All right, quick trivia question for both of you. How many different languages do you speak? One. One. <laughs> you just speak English? English. Yeah, but you can get around in a couple other things. I do all right, a little bit of German. I got Five you. words. What about you? <laughs> Me, I speak English, but I know how to say hello and thank you and goodbye and all many right. other. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, Arkansas District Export Council um, as the chairman. Tell me a little bit about what uh, the Export Council does, a little bit of why it exists. Well, the Export Councils were uh, established uh, three or four decades ago um, by presidential order. Uh, their job really is to help, our, help exporters, uh, in our case, Arkansas exporters, get over the fears of, of exporting, the fears of getting paid, the fears of shipping things correctly and cheaply all over the globe. So our job really is to help Arkansas manufacturers either learn to export or to grow their exports yeah. or grow their business. Get them connected right. to the right places. Many companies don't realize that 90% of their customers are outside of the U.S. They touch into that um, national market they're doing really well and those products can go overseas and they can touch so many more customers and I think it's the fear so what we do is we donate our time going in there and helping to mentor those companies on our experience and if we don't have experience in their area we put them in touch with someone that does. Yeah let's start just helping them find the right place and the right person right. and yes. the right uh, location there. Let's talk about the Governor's Awards for Excellence in Trade. This was uh, recently, yes. you guys had a big deal Our out at the annual. Governor's Mansion. Yes. Christine, tell me a little bit about, uh, you don't have to name all the winners, but just generally what was maybe the common denominator with some of them? So what we do is we'd like to recognize exports within the state of Arkansas and the importance of that is to help build that and want companies to do better and to want to grow. Um, so we have a large, small, medium company that we give it an award to and we do this every year and the governor comes out and he hands out these awards and we have sponsors and it's just a good time to promote exports within the state of Arkansas. All right, and as the chairman, you've seen this event grow a little bit too. Right, I've, I've been involved as chairman now for four years. Um, so as Christine said, it's our eighth year. Um, mm -hmm. We managed to pack the governor's mansion out again this year, uh, lots of interest. And uh, we recognize five uh, great exporters. Yes. Um, Lockheed Martin Company was one of them, and uh, they won our STEM award this year. All right. Yes. Cool. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back, okay. and we're going to talk a little bit about trade deals mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff kind of happening in current events that sets everybody up for your credentials and what you got going on. So now you know they're valid prospects here and know what they're talking about uh, in terms of expertise. I'm Roby Brock. This is Talk Business and Politics. We're back after this. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two-thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history, with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. 
as our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Oh, I love you too, Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me. Welcome back to the program. I'm with William Burgess and Christine Russell. We're talking exports here on Talk Business and Politics Daily today. How big are exports in Arkansas? I'm, not to, I'm not gonna hold you accountable to a specific figure there, but I mean, how important is exporting to the state's economy? I say it's very important. It's about $5 billion mm -hmm. um, for the latest numbers that we have available. Um, the good news is the, our, you know, our closest trading partners are our best trading partners. Number one, Canada, Canada and Mexico. And Mexico. Yeah. Yes. All right, what other countries, where do you see a lot of growth in uh, exporting out of Arkansas? Actually, I see growth in exporting out of Arkansas into the Asian markets. Um, that growth, hopefully, with everything that's going on in the trade agreements um, and the changes in that will help with that growth. Um, but I don't know if you know this, but we are one of the world's largest rice exporters. Sure. And so we have rice that goes into the um, uh, Middle East and also working on going into the Asian markets and building that and hopefully this agreement or the one that would be put in place will help with that. Well let's talk about some political uh, and policy uh, controversies here. We have a president of the United States that wants to change some things about mm -hmm. uh, some existing trade agreements. Let's start with one of the older ones. Let's talk about NAFTA and um, the president wants to renegotiate that and I mean he's kind of throwing that out as an mm -hmm. option right there. What are, what are the pros and cons of that? Well, I think after 20 years, it's certainly time to renegotiate right. NAFTA, and I'm all in favor of that. Um, I think what's important is, is we have to make forward progress on free trade agreements. We've let a couple of free trade agreements go, and, and now we're going to focus on NAFTA, and that's okay. Um, you know, there's some important things that need to be negotiated. I understand lumber and dairy are, are pretty big topics in this, but what's, I think, important is we're crafting NAFTA 2.0 after the progress that we made in TPP. So NAFTA is not a, really a step back as much as it is taking what worked in TPP and now applying it to our closest and best partners. Right, right. And you know, you have to think about it this way. Um, NAFTA was drafted in the early 1990s. Do you remember the computers in 1990? <laughs> where our technology, everything has changed so much. So um, if we're going forward and with those changes, we definitely need to develop that for the time that we're in now. Yeah, uh, so you mentioned TPP earlier too. Right. I think the president scrapped that, didn't he? I mean, he I think did. that's been his approach there. What do you hope happens as a result of that policy statement? Well, I hope that we'll re-engage the rest of the world. Um, we, we need to go ahead and get NAFTA complete before the presidency in Mexico changes soon. Mm -hmm. It may not go our direction. Um, may go to uh, a president that's not so much uh, a strong supporter of the United States. So we need to get this NAFTA agreement done quickly. But after that, I'd like to see us re-engage with our um, partners in Asia and our partners in Europe. Those are two very important yes. regions for this mm -hmm. uh, for this state. Yeah, I don't want to put you guys on any political kind of hot spot, but the you know some of the reaction to scrapping the TPP deal is that we've ceded our authority to China now, mm -hmm. or given them a, a great leg up on that. Do you agree with that? Well, um, I I don't completely agree with that. I think that it's going to take a little time and I think that also the negotiations and you know even from the very beginning of the statement being made that we were going to do that to now that relationship is already building. So I hope that the good change will come out of it. Yeah. yeah so. um, you know while, while the agreement was scrapped, um, China hasn't stopped negotiating free trade agreements. They're right. working on, uh, you know, they have finalized 12 regional free trade agreements and they're working on six more um, just in the last five to six years. Uh, we haven't signed a free trade agreement since 2012 and that was the Panama, Colombia and Korea free right. trade agreements. Yeah. So it seems like 
we're standing still. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see if that jump starts. Let's talk about another uh, hot spot and trade, and, let, and that deals with the communist island of Cuba, which there's just a lot of right. interest for rice for yes. one particular reason, mm -hmm. poultry another big reason. Uh, there's an opportunity for exports there mm -hmm. as well. We've got some of our congressional delegation supports opening up trade with Cuba, some does right. not. So uh, where do you want to see some things go on Cuba? Well, I, I think that one of the main things for our agricultural exporters in the state of Arkansas is the financial restrictions that are currently on transactions right. in Cuba. Um, you can't offer trade terms. Uh, it's cash on the barrel head every time you deal with Cuba. And that's, uh, that's nice for the exporter, but for the buyer, it, it's not so nice. Uh, but certain uh, uh, countries in the world give 120-day uh, trade credit to Cuba. Uh, to their customers in Cuba, and it's very hard to compete yeah, when somebody will finance huge your disadvantage, right? Your purchase for 120 days versus zero days from the United States. So, I think we need to open up um, our, our financial traction uh, transactions with Cuba. All right, what do you see as potential for Cuba? Potential for Cuba, um, I think there's trade in a lot of technology that could go down there. There's a lot of things to help that country grow in that sense, um, but we have to be able to open up that barrier. Logistically speaking, um, since it's opened up a little bit, I get the question, can we ship to Cuba? Can we, can we, can we do that now? And it's a uh, catch-22 question. Um, yes, we will have the availability soon. Um, is there going to be a lot of paperwork to go through? Probably. Right. Um, so I think through time those barriers will lessen and be able to have the companies be able to trade into Cuba a little bit better. And speaking of um, agriculture, it's been since 2006, I believe, that we've been able to even ship any kind of rice or anything like that in there <laughs> um, on the basis of those agreements on payment terms of 120 days. Yeah, I talked to a lot of folks in the agriculture community and they're they're ready for some Cuba trade mm -hmm. on that. I can't figure out, this is the one thing I can't figure out on Cuba, is it going to be better for them to buy cars from us or us to buy cars from <laughs> them? Because, I mean, I there's some classics down there. there. I mean, I think there's some money to be made. So. Absolutely. All right, Christine, William, thank you both very much. Very interesting. Keep up the good work. Keep us informed right. on everything going on through the Export Council. Appreciate all Absolutely. the uh, consideration y'all give us. Thanks. Thank That's you. all for today's program. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.